Ladies and gentlemen, this is Trisha with Insectopia, and today we're going to be pinning some bugs together. So I just figured we'd kind of hang out here, pin some bugs, chat about, you know, where and when we were when we were collecting the bugs. Good times. All right. So I have, I don't know, a whole bunch of vials of alcohol of insects. I'm going to say most of them, most of them are probably beetles. Um, I'm going to hope that most of them also have information. I think that some of these vials, some of these vials, vials may have lost, may have become disconnected from their information, which is kind of sad. So some of these guys, I might not know exactly where they're from. Um, which is probably also why I haven't, um, gone through and pinned them yet. But, um, but I wanted to go through them and at least get them in the collection, right? They're gonna be much cooler in the collection and pinned next to all of the other friends than they are kind of just, like, stuck in these vials. And then, maybe some of these guys that don't have information I can, like, make a raffle or a giveaway if I've got extras of them. Alright, so, um, you can see my hands. Perfect. Alrighty. Where are we starting? I figured we would start with one that I knew had information. We can, we can start with this guy. I can see the information in there. Put these off to the side. And I have a variety of different materials. If you guys want to see um, what I'm working with today. I'm going to open these pins. I think what I have today are three pins. Unless they're too thick. Oh. Alright, so um, what I have here today are some insect pins, my insects. I have a variety of different um, forcep types that I'm going to be using. So we can show you those really quick. Um, I have jeweler's forceps that come to a very, very fine, sharp point. Um, I have a dissecting probe to kind of help pull, um, to kind of pu help pull some of the legs. Um, I have blunt forceps. These are these are going to be less dangerous um, for. Um, these are going to be less dangerous for the specimens, right? So sometimes if you're trying to be a little more gentle. And then um, those are just kind of the plain boring old forceps that everybody kind of needs. Um, I also have um, I also have an eyedropper to pull alcohol out and to grab smaller specimens. Um, I personally like to use a... Do you, does anyone recognize these? These are like the little cups um, that you can mix paint in. Um, I cut two of them off of one of mine, but um, I use these. I use these to sort insects and alcohol, so I just put this to the side. Awesome. Now. All I need is a container to dump all of this alcohol into so that I can get the buggies out. That'll be fine. some stuff out of the way. Just 
Try to make sure I'm not going off the screen too much. All right, with these older specimens, let's see. These specimens are actually like six years old. Um, collected back in July of 2015. Um, and my label just has a date and a GPS coordinate, but that's going to be good enough for me. All right, I always like to pin the label just so that it doesn't move anywhere else. Okay. Now, um, there are a couple of things about insect pinning. You want, you want to make sure that the pin that actually goes through the insect's body is um, a high quality pin because that one is going to actually stay in his body, right? All of the other pins that we use are going to be used around the insect's body to help kind of hold and position it properly. Um, I normally use size 2 pins. Um, right at this very moment, my I have size 3 right here. Um, I think my size 2 pins are over in the drawer over there. So we might have to get up and get some. But I have a variety of pins here. So I've been kind of pulling out of this, you know, mess of pins. There we go. Okay. Now, when we're pinning our insects, we want to make sure that um, we're considering what type of insect it is and how we want to pin it. Um, our goal is to get the pin... Um, our goal is to get the pin between the second and third pairs of legs. All right, generally off to the right hand side. So if we're looking at my grasshopper here, we have a head, we've got this pronotum right here, this shape. Um, and then we want to be pinning on the right hand side between the second and third pairs of legs, generally. Right about there. Um, you can give it. You can give your insect the 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 spinning test um, to see if it's completely to see if you've pinned it completely straight. So if you spin it this way and it doesn't wiggle or rotate, you know that you have your insect pinned straight. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and use the corner of my board so that we can get as many in as possible today. Um, now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna pull these legs. Well, let's do something first. I'm gonna stabilize my insects. So what I mean by that is a lot of times grasshoppers like to spin on the pin. So I'm gonna put a pin on either side of its body so that it doesn't spin all over the place on me. All right. And now when I am, when I am pinning, um, my goal is not to make it in the most lifelike position possible or to make it look big and scary. The leg got hooked on the underside of this pin. My goal when I'm pinning my insects is to make sure that they are even and that they are tucked. Because if we've got mostly tucked legs, Um, if we have mostly tucked legs, then the likelihood of them losing legs is decreased, right? If our legs are closer to the body, they're less likely to break off. Now, a lot of people say that they don't like pinning older specimens directly out of alcohol just because they can be a lot they can be a little more fragile and a little bit more difficult to move. But you can see these specimens are, six years old and I'm not having any problems moving the legs or the joints around. They're even a little bit loose. Um, but you saw me take this one out of alcohol. It was just recent. If I leave this insect to sit and dry even just a little bit, um, the joints are going to harden up and then it's going to be impossible for me to pin this insect. That's why we do it directly out of the alcohol. Alright. 
If you have any questions or comments out there, go ahead and just shoot, shoot me a message. It's a little, that joint is a little stuck. All right, make sure that our leg, grasshopper's legs stay up. Bend at the knee. And I'm going to pull these antenna to make sure that they're not dragging on the ground. Now, whatever position you leave your insect in, that's what it's going to stay. That's the position it's going to stay in forever. And at the end, it's going to be a lot of kind of micro movements, just making sure that everything is even. So for those of you who haven't been, um, for those of you who haven't pinned insects with me before, there are two different schools of thinking when you are pinning insects. There's kind of like these two different groups of ins of people. They are There are the spreaders and the tuckers. All right. Somebody who is a, someone who is a spreader is a person who likes to take all of the legs and all of the wings and spread them out wildly or to make them look like they're in graphic positions, or to make them look like they're like a praying mantis ready to eat something. A lot of times when you're spreading insects like that, you are, um, a lot of times when you're spreading insects like that, they're for display, and they're not really for scientific use. Um, you can use them scientifically if they have all of their data present, but what I like are, is tucking and that's what you see in a lot of museums is they will tuck their legs and their wings um, so that the specimens don't get injured. Now when we're looking at this specimen here let me see if I can um, increase the size of this for a minute. There we go. Might as well be a little bigger right? You can see above my green screen. Okay, so um, on this specimen right here, we're going to be, uh, we always try to pin between the second and the third pairs of legs, and we like to pin off to the right hand side. So the pin for this insect is going to be going through right about, right about here. Okay, you just can't see it as well with the pin. And then we do the spin test. We spin the we spin the insect all the way around, making sure that it's all straight and aligned. Now, a lot of times when you have um, when you're spreading insects, you need a double layer of styrofoam. So this is two layers of styrofoam because you want to be able to push the pin all the way down into the foam. guy is missing one of his legs. I was wondering why he seemed kind of uneven. 
You know what we call insects that are missing legs? Pentapods. Don't spin on the pin. So what I'm trying to do here is my insect, this is my insect's leg, right? So we've got this femur and we have a tibia, and I'm trying to get the femur to go up and the tibia to go down so that he can have his leg tucked. So I'm positioning a pin like this to get the femur up, and then I'm trying to kind of push the tibia down. There we go. All I had to do was explain it to you, and then it worked. <coughs> All right, so we're going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to kind of try and pull this leg up, get the femur in the right place, and then pull the tibia down. Insects have similarly named um, parts on their legs, right? So we have a femur and a tibia. Insects have a femur and a tibia. the back legs to straighten first to last This guy that I'm pinning right here is what we call a true bug, meaning it has a piercing and sucking mouth part. And then when you're pinning inside of a box, it's really important that the pins get pushed low because you want to make sure that you're able to close the lid afterwards, especially living in a house with cats. I don't need the kitties to accidentally break collection, right? All right, so I have, looks like, four more hemipterans that I'm going to pin really quick. These guys should not take too long to get their legs sorted out because their legs don't matter as much. And then we'll get to some bigger beetles. How about that? I have some pretty awesome, I have some Chrysina that I think are unlabeled, unfortunately, but we can spread, we can pin those.
looking for a good quality pen to put through the body of our insect. I like black enamel pens. I've seen too many of the silver steel pins. Um, that's what they used to use make their pins out of back in the day. And um, I've seen the acids from the insect actually eat away at the pin. So I don't know, after a hundred years or so, the um, the pins will actually start to break in half where the insect where they go through the insect's body, and that's why you want to make sure that the pins that are going through the body are enamel or covered or plated with something to help protect the pins, so that even in a hundred years your specimens will still be good. And then the pins that go around the insect don't matter as much because those are going to be the ones that are taken out and reused for another specimen. Looks like we have another pentapod. This guy's missing his middle leg on the right. Pull the leg out from under his body. Seems to be holding on to something back there. There we go. Make a little cross over his toes. Make sure that those guys don't move. And then stand the legs up. Straighten these front legs just a tiny bit. I want your leg to go in the other way, bud. Will you do that for me? Pretty please? Pretty please with a cherry on top? There we go, there we go. Almost. Oh. That is going to be good enough for me. Push the pins down so we can close the lid later. Alright, so I have what looks like two more true bugs, and then two more of these little guys, and then we'll get to some big shiny beetles. Deal? Deal.
Perfect. All right, let's get to something big and shiny. <clears throat> now, I believe that most of these specimens are from 2015. These guys can use these brand new number three pins, so I might as well get them out. Some of these guys might not be. So this is Chrysina Bayeri. It's the Chrysina or the jewels. It's the jewel scarab with the purple legs. Um, these were collected many, many years ago, and have been sitting in alcohol, which is not the best for them. So they've gotten these little dark spots on their elytra. Um, and that's not natural. That's just probably from being in the, the um, alcohol for so long. Now, this is going to be a really easy specimen to see where our, where our pin should go through. So our pin should be going through right about here. It's going to be going through the right elytra, and you want it to go somewhere between the second. You, when it comes out the bottom, you want it to be coming through this plate right here. You want it to be coming through the second and th between the second and third pairs of legs. Comes through that plate right there, pretty much centered. Get him pinned straight. Um, I like to kind of pre prep some of the legs to make sure the legs are going in the right direction, especially with big guys like this. So I'm just going to take this front leg and kind of scoosh it in. There we go. So that it has the ability to kind of, it'll be easier to scoosh it in now because I've worked it with my hands a little bit. And these guys are easy enough. Um, if you wanted to spread them, you can. You can make their legs go nice and wide. You can open up the elytra and spread out the wings. And um, But that's going to be for specimens that you want in... That's going to be for specimens that you want in, like, shadow boxes and decorative displays. Um... For research or for museum quality specimens, you just want to make sure that the legs are even and that they are um, tucked into the body as much as possible without covering any characteristics. So you want the legs a little bit open, but against the body. Now, this back leg is too far in. I can't grab it, so I'm going to pull it out a little bit. Just so that I can put it where I want it. Okay, so we've got a bunch of these guys. Let's do another one. I'm curious to see what these specimens are going to look like when they dry out after they... They've been soaked in alcohol for so long. I'm gonna, I'm curious to see what, how they're gonna how they're gonna look when they dry out.
sometimes I get this feeling that moving, that trying to move these legs is a little bit like hurting cats. Just trying to get the legs to move in the exact position that you want can be a little tricky sometimes. Oh man, his speckling all got all the way up into the pronotum. A little shiny from the alcohol coming out wet. Have any of you out there ever made an insect collection before? We had a couple casualties in the alcohol. Ooh. <clears throat> nice and smelly here. If only I could send smells to you. Wasn't there something that could do that at one point? They were trying to sell it that could send somebody over like 250 smells.
It's funny because I had this vial of Chrysina Bayeri in my um, in my collection, and there are four species of Chrysina. Chrysina is the genus of this beetle. There's four species of Chrysina in the United States. And I, last summer, I was actually able to collect three of the four species. Bayer Eye was actually the only one I didn't collect last summer. And I've collected it many times in the past. Oh no, he lost his leg. That one is not, we're going to have to put, put that one through. So um, just like uh, every, now and, every now and again when you're getting an IV, um, I don't know if you've had this, but you'll have the, the nurse kind of put the pin, put the needle into your skin and then kind of dig around looking for the vein or like when you're, they're trying to draw blood. Well, sometimes you have to do something very similar with these beetles. If they don't, um, if they don't pin exactly as straight as you want them to, you can always take the out of the bottom hole but you see you leave it in the top side and then you can kind of readjust it and make sure that um, it's going to go through the beetle straight. It does put two holes in the bottom of the insect but it only has one hole on the top and our insect is going to thank us for being straight later because when our when our beetles aren't pinned straight on the pins if you are moving that specimen from one unit tray to another tray um, you end up you can end up kind of putting the specimen crooked right because if you're trying to put all of the pins in straight and one of the guys is crooked then he can end up injuring somebody else We don't want anyone running into anyone else. No bug accidents. All right, so those Chrysina Bayeri don't have information with them. So we'll see how they turn out and then that will determine um, and that'll determine their place in the collection I think these are cool I'm a little bit sad that some of these insects don't have information like these are huge longhorns why don't we finish up by doing lo some longhorn beetles there's three of them in this jar But also, I think that's why I, I, I hadn't pinned these guys yet. You know, they're what they're from 2015, so they're six years old. Um, they never got pinned because I think the information got lost. Longhorn beetles. We'll do one at a time as to make sure that we don't um, dry out any of our specimens too quick. So just like any other just like any other beetle, we're going through the right hand side of the the we're going through the right elytra, which will be right about here. We want it to come out the bottom of the insect between the second and third pairs of legs. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of loosen these leg joints just a little bit, kind of bend them. Yes. The first time that they bend, um, you'll almost feel a little pop. And it's easier to do, and it's easier to do that with your hands rather than doing this with a pin because you want to make sure the joints are kind of flexible. 
Here. Okay. I'm going to put the pin through this this friend in my hand. So we don't so that we don't mess up any of its leg characters. Oh man, he's powerful. Let's see, we can do it this way. He has incredibly, um, he has an incredibly hard exoskeleton. That took a minute. Put the pin through. All right, now this is a longhorn beetle. He's got long antenna. He's got long legs. He needs he needs a little bit of control in his life. Friend, what are you doing? So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that oh, he's dragging a little bit. Friend, don't drag. There. Way better. Okay. Now we want to make sure that his body is down against the styrofoam. Alright. And his legs are going to kind of splay out all over the place like that. We'll be able to control them. We do want the legs out, though, rather than kind of buried underneath the body. This will allow us to make sure that the legs all get to where we want them to go. Um, we've got these two long antenna up here in the front. Ooh. His antenna joint stiffened up. Okay. All right. So, um, let's see. He says, look at me. I want to be spread out and have all my legs all over the place. All right. I'm going to, his, um, his joints are still a little bit hard. So I'm going to secure his body so that while we're moving his legs, he doesn't go spinning all over the place. And then it looks like this leg is the closest to being where I want it. So we're just going to make sure that one stays while we're working on all of the other ones. Yeah. All right. And then I guess we can work our way up and around our friend here. I'm going to use some bigger pins to hold his legs. see if I can get the femur to, to bend from the tibia. You see how right here it's not bending as well as I want, like a knee? I don't think I softened that joint enough. So the secret to getting that to bend is to secure it right at the base of the femur and then to push on the tibia with a second pin. That'll give you enough leeway on both sides to get that angle right. And then we just want to make sure that the legs between the left and the right hand side are even. So it looks like this guy can go in a little bit more. And then we can do the front legs.
have a hind leg that we didn't fix up? It thought it was trying to get away from me. Oh. Cats are chasing each other around the house. It scared me. All right, so we've got legs pretty much taken care of. The legs look pretty even. Um, now we get to go ahead and go into the antenna. So with longhorn beetles, we want to make sure that their antenna are protected. They're very long, they're very fragile, and we don't want them, we don't want them breaking off. The longhorns are one of the coolest parts of these beetles. So a lot of times what I will do is I'll just take these antenna and I'll put them You'll notice that these pins on the sides of the bodies they um, that are holding in the legs are running along the side of the body also, right? So if we have the ability to take the antenna and kind of put them on the inside of all of those pins and then secure it one time, then we have... We have two things that we worry about. We worry about the, um, the antenna taking up so much space that you can't fit more longhorn beetles into that tray, right? You don't want them up straight as far as they can go because that's not going to be able to save as much space. Um, we also want to make sure and stay conscientious that this is the pin that um, people are going to be picking the specimen up by. So you don't want the antenna to be in the way of picking up the specimen. All right, so if we want to make sure of that, we want to make sure that these antenna kind of stay lower. We're going to go on the outside of this one and on the inside of that one. Yeah, that's better. Oh. He says no. Uh-oh. He says no. He doesn't want to push his antenna back. So the issue is I'm afraid I'm going to break his antenna off. It seems really, really intent on going forward. So what we're going to do is we are going to change our plans. We're going to see how far back we can get this left antenna to go, and then we'll just make the right one match it. We could even say that the left antenna is our limiting factor. Let me get this one out of the way. You know what? This is a six-year-old specimen. That's going to have to be good enough. I really wanted that joint to move, but I'm afraid of breaking it. I would rather have an antenna than break it off. So I guess we're sticking it like that. And, you know, we'll just have to be careful with him and other specimens. All right, I have two more longhorn beetles. Hopefully, hopefully their antenna are nicer. 
Let's see. Are you going to have nice antenna? Uh-oh. He says, no, my antenna's broken off already. What about you? Oh, no. He's got good antenna. All right. Two more. I believe these are in the genus Prianus. So we've got all of our legs moving, our antenna, there we go, we're moving. Legs are all wild. Let's get them situated. are in the ceiling. So my live streaming space where I like to pin bugs and hang out and do all of my art and classes and things like that, I'm in the basement here and we used to have a drop ceiling here in the basement except it's not there anymore. We took it out. So um, the uh, cats now have the ability to kind of get into the ceiling. They'll walk on top of the walls and stuff. It's great times. They, they absolutely love it. No one's gotten hurt. Only a, only a wall hanger or two when they were trying and experimenting on how to get up. Somebody knocked a painting off the wall. mostly even the right hind leg looks like it can come back a little bit
let's do the last one right here. Oh, oh. Splash. Guys, this ethanol smells really bad. Okay. <clears throat> One more. One more final longhorn beetle. I believe this one is also Prianus. He's got these really nifty spikes on the sides of his pronotum. And just like always with these big beetles that have been sitting in alcohol for too long, their joints are a little bit stiff. So what I do just a little bit is I'll go goop. And we can just work those, we can work those joints a little bit until they are a little bit more flexible. Um, every now and again, you will hear a small pop. I believe that's probably a muscle breaking in there, but, um, the, uh, the legs stay connected and are still good specimens. Alrighty. All the legs are moving, all the antennae are moving. Now we can put the pin through it. was holding on to me with three of his tarsal claws. Well, I guess six. Three legs. Two tarsal claws on each leg. <laughs> Alright, we want to get these legs spread out a little bit so that we can get his body all the way down to the styrofoam. That's going to help us. Hey, he came up a little bit. Go back down. Go back down. Yeah, making sure that the body is all the way down on the styrofoam is going to help make sure that the legs and the body are all on the same plane. Very good. Oh man, he looks wild like. And that's not how we want to leave him. If we let him dry like that, his legs would stay all wild like that and we wouldn't be able to do anything with him. always go forward, middle and hind legs always go backwards. 
I don't know if I've told you that before. So recently I found a key to all of the genera of blister beetles in the United States. And so I figured, not today, but the next time I'm live streaming, maybe we'll actually go through all of the blister beetles and see if we can identify some to genus and if not, and, and maybe even to species, depending on, depending on what we have. The key that I found goes to genus, um, but we might be able to find even more. Oh, come on. This middle leg doesn't want to do me good. Doesn't want to do me right. Here. Stay that way. All right, and then last but not least, let's fix the antenna. Just make sure that they're, like, this is a great specimen to look at because we've got those antenna and we're just tucking them on the inside of those two pins. It should stay like that. Um, the same with this antenna. I can just take it and put it on the inside of those two pins and just let it sit down and run parallel to the body. And... The antenna are going to stay happy and healthy, and they're not going to break off there. Um, this poor friend up here, that antenna is likely going to break off at some point. Um, we should give him a name. He's special. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is 3.15. We've been pinning for about an hour. Um, I just want to let you know that we have a couple of, we have a couple of things in store, alright? Um, I just want to say thank you for hanging out with me as we go through and we pinned some buggies today. We were able to go through and we had some with information, right? Some true bugs and some grasshoppers. I picked them, they were a little smaller, but we picked them because they had information. Um, and I can actually make labels for them. We have a handful of Chrysina Bayeri. These guys were have been sitting in alcohol for a little bit of time, so they have that modeling on their backs. That's not natural to their individual to that's not natural to them. Um, but it'll be fine. And we have these guys, three different species of it might just be two species. Um, three individuals, three longhorn beetles that were collected out west. Um, although I'm not exactly sure where. My guess is though is that it was in 2015. My guess is that this entire um, this entire uh, tray of vials is 2015. That would make the most sense to me. But I would say most of them unfortunately. Oh, this one has a label. Oh, there's lots in here. Oh, look, there's a scorpion. Cool. We'll have to spread and check out this, this vial with the scorpion next time. And a stag beetle. Oh, and some tiger beetles. Cool. A whole vial of fiery searchers. Yeah, and this was also from 2015. That's my guess, is that this is a 2015 tray. It's all that I have left of my original collection. Wow. This is a whole vial of hymenopterans. 
bees, wasps, and ants. Alright, so I think it's going to be fun to go through these and, and pin them, even though they don't have a lot of information, um, just to get them into the collection. Um, I'll probably put something like 2015 vials um, on them, uh, but I can tell you in 2015 I definitely traveled all over the country, so I couldn't even tell you what state these individuals are from. We'll have to identify them and see their distribution. Ha ha ha. No, that's cheating. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to say thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope that you've enjoyed kind of watching me, watching me pin. Um, if there is anything that you have to ask me, I am always open for buggy questions. Okay. Um, now... Uh, let's see. I also post educational YouTube videos, so if you ever want to go and check those out, those are at Insectopia. Um, I think the last one that we posted that was a whiteboard video was about spotted lanternflies and their invasiveness. Um, I also post on Instagram and Facebook and do all of the wonderful things, so you guys can always find me, check me out there. I love answering bug questions, send me bug pictures, just all of the things. Um, and I have exciting new classes coming up, so I am hoping to get all of that figured out, and then I'll be able to tell you about it. So, um, stay tuned for all of the new and exciting different things that are happening, and I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, yep, yep, yep. <laughs>